Okay, so now that we've got some real basics down of HTML, we're going to get into how we do some document formatting. Uh, I've already saved a file here, format.html, and I have it open here in my browser. And we're going to just start working in here and do some formatting. We'll start by creating a basic HTML document with an HTML tag and the body tag. I like to put my end tags in at the beginning, and then we'll work in the body section here. So the first thing I want to show you are called heading tags. Uh, let's just start by putting in some basic text just so we can kind of see. That's what our basic text looks like. I'm going to enlarge that just so it's easier for you on the screen. So that's our basic text. Now we may want to make this a little bit more formal. So let's do an example here. We'll leave the hello world and we'll say welcome. Let me show you what that looks like and then we'll talk about the tag. So I've saved this, I reload it here, and now you can see I have welcome. It's really big, it's bold. It also has a line break after it, which we normally don't get in HTML. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. And so the H1 tag stands for header and it's a level one heading. There's different levels, um, so let's just do some examples. There's H2, and I'll just label these so we can see them. There's H3, and I'm going to leave in um, our regular text underneath just so you can see uh, how these look relative to normal text. Okay, so if we save that and refresh, there you go. So you can see level four is about the same size as regular text. All of them are bolded. Level five and six get smaller, and this gives you an idea of what they do. So you use these to create headings for sections like you would do in a Word document, and they give you bold text. They change the size depending on the level, and they'll put a line break afterwards. Now I'm talking about those line breaks. Let's just talk about that a little bit. So here I have hello world on the next line, let's say, this is my first web page. So I have these on separate lines, but if I come over to the browser and reload it, they all show up on one line. And in fact, it doesn't matter what I do, I can put a bunch of returns in there, I can put some spaces in there, and if I reload it, it looks exactly the same. HTML ignores white space. So you'll get one single space character, and that's it. It doesn't recognize things like returns or multiple spaces. So if you want to put in those line breaks, there's special tags that you need. Now you can use the heading tags, and those will always put a line break afterwards, but you don't necessarily want a heading when you want to separate things like paragraphs or different lines. So let's just put these next to each other, and remember, that looks just like this. So there's a few different tags you can use. There's the BR tag, which stands for break. Generally when that tag is used, it's used like this without a matching end tag. Uh, it was never a tag that had an end tag. So that's not formally correct XML because everything has to have an end tag. You'll sometimes see it written like this. This is a shorthand that says we're starting the BR tag and ending it all in the same tag which is a little bit weird. I tend not to do it, but it's formally correct, and you'll see that some places. So it's basically the start and the end tag all combined. That's going to give us a single line break. So if we go from here and refresh our page, now you can see that these are on separate lines. You can also do a P tag. That stands for paragraph. Again, oftentimes you'll see it just like this without a corresponding end tag. Sometimes you'll see it like this. This tag is used in a different way, though, um, where you'll often see the P tag starting a paragraph and then the end P tag at the end of it. Um, I tend not to do that because it's the P tag itself that creates the line break. So it's a little, you have, really have to use it consistently on every single paragraph if you want it to work like this. So I'll tend not to do it that way. Instead, you'll see me just put it where I want the line break to go. Again, you can do it formally correct XML with the start and end tag all combined. Whatever you like, you'll probably see me doing it like this throughout the rest of the course because that's what I've always done, but we'll leave it correct. So the BR tag gave us a line break like this and the P tag gives us a blank line in between. 
Okay, so BR gives you a single line break. The text will start immediately on the next line. The P tag gives you a line break with a blank space in between. And so it's a good way to separate paragraphs. Let me comment these out. Comments start with an exclamation point and two dashes. You can see everything turned gray. That's going to hide all of the text until the dash dash and the close bracket. So that basically is saying ignore this code here. All right, so that's just so I can hide those headings and we can have our text up at the top. So we're going to focus down on our text here. There's a couple other formatting tags that are useful. There's the bold tag, which is B, and then you have a slash B, and whatever comes between the start and the end tag will be bolded. There's an underline tag, which is U, and then you have a slash U to end it. And there's an italics tag, which is an I. And these all work the same. I tend to teach them as a group of three because they're basically these single letter tags that do bold, underline, italics. I've got one word between them, but you can have whole paragraphs in between them if you want. This has fallen a little out of favor with the people who do really formal HTML. Um, they like to do this kind of formatting with style sheets. You definitely can do it this way, but a lot of times it's just easier to throw in these simple tags if there's one word that you want bolded. Instead of doing it with style sheets, I'll show you how to do this later in the semester, but as an example, if you wanted to do an underline, you would do it like this. I'll put that on its own line here. Um, so that's formally correct and the preferred way among some people to do this now where we put all of the um, the kind of design part into the style sheets. But man, this is a lot more complicated than just doing the U tag. So uh, I will often use the U tag and the B tag and the italics tag for bold underline and italics. These are easy to remember because they're the same as the keyboard shortcuts you would use in Microsoft Word, for example. Um, so let's take a look at that. So we have bold on hello, underline on world, and italics on first. And if we reload it, you can see all of that, along with the underline that I did in the more complicated style sheets way. Don't worry about that for now. We'll get into all of those style sheets in the last lesson of the course. But there you go, bold underline in italic. So those are some great formatting basics for us to cover in this lesson. The heading tags, which give you bolded text and a blank line afterwards. Uh, the P tag and the BR tag, which give you line breaks. And the bold underline and italics tags, which allow you to do that kind of basic formatting.